first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Peace. Back once again with Dr. Alim Bay. All right, how y'all doing out there tonight? We getting ready to get into some current events. So just bear with us as we get ready to go through the, I guess you can say, the headlines. Now, um, we know what's going on with the Pope. Um, he's getting ready to retire, if not already has. Now, the thing is about this is that it's right on the helm of when we hear about this asteroid on which that is going to be coming around the Earth which is only going to be about 17,200 miles away from the Earth, and which that's supposed to be happening February the 15th in two days. All right, so all of a sudden he resigns prior to this. Now, we know that the Vatican has a gigantic telescope, one of the most powerful telescopes, in order to observe um, astral uh, phenomenons. All right, so... That's one of the things in which that is taking place, as well as also um, 2012, um, from December the 21st to 2012 into 2013, um, all the way up until actually 2016, would be um, phenomenal, phenomenal solar flare activity, all right? Um, matter of fact, so much solar flare activity this year in which that has already began knocking out electronics, all types of electronics whether it's um, the Internet, World Wide Web, as they refer to it as, computer systems, banking systems. Matter of fact, Bank of America just the past week, the whole system was shut down, all right? Um, so we know that these things are taking place, and it's no coincidence that it's also at the helm of these foreclosures, these bank for- foreclosures, all right? Um, as a matter of fact, when we get into that science, we know that a lot of things is taking place with this particular um, banking system, all right? We know that these, we're talking about trillions and trillions, quadrillions um, dollars, you know, um, in which that runs through the IMF, the World Bank, the Federal Reserve Bank, and there's an article in which that was written, um, January the 14th, in which that say, um, states that in the money for the Reserve Bank, where banks foreclosed on. So the banking system just happened to get foreclosed on 
around the same time that the Pope uh, retires um, because of supposedly health issues. And all of this is at the helm of the fact that the Vatican and their Jewish bankers, known as the Rothschilds, you know, control the banking system, you know, along with the Rockefellers, in which that they finance, in which that now becomes one of the top um, families, you know, um, in which that the Rothschilds control the Eastern as the Rockefellers control the Western portions of the planet. All right, mm-hmm. so here they are, you know, in cahoots with the Vatican and, and of course, with the... Um, the Kingdom of England, you know, in which that all of this correlates. We know that the Queen of England controls the Social Security Administration. She owns it, basically. Right. Mm-hmm. And that is all in behest to the fact of her paying homage, or have to pay homage to the Vatican. All right? Um, so basically everything is Vatican-controlled or the papal state-controlled. All right, or what we refer to as Catholicism or the Catholic Church. All right, um, there was a news in which that broke, in which that the World Banks has been legally and officially foreclosed on. All right, so yes, you can reread um, what we have just read it, and basically that the World Banks have been legally foreclosed on. Um, the Federal Reserve, the Hague, the World Bank, um, the United Nations, the IMF. The BIS, which is the Bank of International Settlements, and many others are included. Right wow. now, the crazy thing is that this has not even hit mainstream media for obvious reasons: mass hysteria, media agreements with governments, and economic implications in which that this shit is getting ready to fold. Right, right. Um, a group called the um the One People Public Trust released an announcement and a document stating that. They have a person on the inside gathering information for them and that there is a passage that reads or rereads that the people and all people um, equally on earth has an individual duly verified sum certain of $5 billion in lawful money of the United States of America, gold and silver, over three quintillion, 500 quadrillion, which is, by the way, um, three and five followed by 17 zeros, all right, just and duly verified equity debt against the debtors. In other words, um, your birth certificates, and which we have spoken about before, you are worth your weight in gold. Gold right now is about $1,700, um, soon over 2000 But let's say that you weigh 10 pounds, and one pound, you know, is 16 ounces, and one ounce of gold is worth nearly $2,000. So you do that times 16, and then 16 times 10. Hmm. Okay? So that's what we're looking at. And that's at birth. We're not talking about by the time that you mature at the age of 18. It goes into the billions. And as it says, as it says here, almost worth $5 billion. So each individual, which is the debtor, you know, with your name spelled in all caps, the straw man, at age of 18, when it matures, and go on the international stock market known as the foreign stock exchange through the New York stock exchange, which is domestic or national stock market, you are worth $5 billion. All right, so this is an additional duly verified amount of this $5 billion in the lawful money of the United States of America, which is actually gold and silver. So for each of these people damaged by the action and the system of the debtors, over three quadrillion lawful money of the United States of America, gold and silver, is basically duly ver- verified debt of damages against the debtors. And so it's against all of these particular banking systems in which there's been running game on the people, not just the American people, but the people around the world, by putting them under the artificial status, the de facto status. Mm-hmm. And these governments are not de jure. They are not true governments. No, sir. You know, so what does this mean exactly? <laughs> well, <laughs> that still is up in the air. But we know that possibility that this thing is getting ready to collapse. Mm-hmm. All right? Now, in easier terms, a never-ending source 
of um of information in which that when you go and do your research, you find out how much of this information is actually covered up. You know, um, matter of fact, they speak about some more to this story is that the power of financial or financial capitalism has another far reaching aim, nevertheless, than to create a world system of financial control in private hands able to dominate the political system of each country and the act and the economy of the world as a whole. Now this is what they're going towards. Remember this is part of the global um plan of the new world order. All right. This system was to be controlled in a fewless fashion by the central banks of the world acting in concert. By secret agreements arrived at the frequent private meetings and conferences. Of course we know that's dealing with the Bilderbergers, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission. All right, which basically is, you know, the members of these particular groups is what we constitute as the Illuminati. All right, so when people talk about the Illuminati, they got to be more specific. They got to break it down to the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, um, the Bilderbergers, and um, the different other factions such as Bohemian Grove faction, and etc. Right, but the as now the apex of this system was to be a bank for international settlements in Basel, Switzerland. Now, a private bank owned and controlled by the world central banks, which was themselves a private corporation. Now, you can get this information from Kyle Quigley, who was the teacher, actually, of Bill Clinton, and in his book, Tragedy and Hope, right. in which that was written in 1966, page, matter of fact, it's page 324, all right? So, he breaks down, um, also, you know, these, you know, foreign control central Zionist bankers, you know what I'm saying? He breaks that information down. And that's who we actually are dealing with. So there was a um, an article that came out, and it was called The Guardian, all right? And it was actually spoke about Lyndon LaRouche, who's like the head of the, um, um, man, what's the name of the um, um, organization? I can't remember. I think it's the, um, I can't remember it right now. Uh, It'll come back to me I in can't a second. Either. Huh? I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember it either. Right, Lyndon LaRouche. He, yeah, he was up, locked up or something. Right, he was locked yeah, up. Yeah, let him up, out. Right, right. But I they got that organization. Um, right, it was the um, um the John Burke Society. John Burke Society. Right. Now, 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 on December, no, on January the 25th, he did a video press conference revealing information that he received about a pending massive series of indictments against President Obama. Now, these stories have been floating around in various forms and, of course, for over a year, but time has changed, and the public as a whole did not buy the Sandy Hook, you know, um, um, story. You know, and, of course, you know, the elites, you know, um, you know, by Obama and the elites. So they elevated the fear in the gun grab, all right? And so they had to come with another story right after that, you know, because the Sandy Hook thing was just too apparent, just too damn apparent. It was just too fake. You know, they could have had better actors and could have had better um, staging, you know, than what we've seen. Right. You know, I mean, this shit was ridiculous. <laughs> but it was. <laughs> All right? I mean, here it is, the little girl in which that they said was Emily, you know, who's supposed to have been dead, you know, based on the Sandy Hook massacre. You know, here she is two days later at the memorial being held by President Obama in a picture. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that everything was bullshit, but I'm saying that enough of it was. <laughs> I'm saying that enough of it was that um, there's no way possible that we can, um, you know, negate, you know, what was happening next. And that's with this Chris Dortner, um thing here. And um, so, of course, we know that um, Pope Benedict, you know what I'm saying, the um, 16th, is getting, um, he put forth his resignation in which that is going to lead to what they refer to as the first black pope in modern times, Cardinal um, Peter Turkson. Now, I don't know how this nigga name is Peter Turkson, um, <laughs> and he's from Ghana, but that's another story. <laughs> okay. but the Roman Catholic um, Cardinal from Ghana and current president of the um, um, the Pontifical 
um, Council for Justice and Peace um, is a source of pride in his home country, as they say. Um, say Archbishop Gabriel Charles um, Palmer Buckles, right, in which that is there within Accra, Ghana. All right, now, it says for Ghananese, he was our first cardinal, and to be made cardinal in his 50s was a big feather in his cap, all right, or in our cap, as he um, writes. Now, now if y'all haven't seen the pictures, y'all can go to um article written by Christine Roberts, New York Daily News. So this is in the New York Daily News, February the 11th. All right, so here it is. Um, the Pope resigns February 11th. Let me tell you, February the 15th, um, this asteroid is coming that the Catholic Church has a gigantic and one of the most powerful telescopes, so they know about astrological things in which that is taking place. Biblically, they've been expecting wormwood, in which that is mentioned in the book of Revelation. Now, if you read in the book of Revelation, it speaks about wormwood in which that would come um, and hit the planet Earth, in which that create these plagues. So this is what they've been looking for, if they was taking it in a literal sense. All right, but, um, but Cardinal Peter Turkson of um, Ghana is one of the top potential successors for Pope Benedict um, the 16th, and, um, who announced his resignation, um, of course, um, this past, um, you know, Monday, you know. But they already knew, you know. As a matter of fact, with him announcing it Monday that he was going to step down, all eyes were on his potential successor, you know, which was him. So here it is. The United States had to put a brother into position, um, in 2008, for the um, last four years leading up to December 21st, 2012, so he can usher in that energy. And now, here it is, um, the day of his inauguration, um, or I should say just a week or so after his inauguration, and the day of his, you know, um, what is it, the day after his, you know, or the day before, excuse me, his um, presidential speech in which that everybody been hyping about over the last, you know, 24 hours or so. Um, you know, here it is, he's speaking, President Obama, that is, and all of this is taking place, you know, and here they are talking about putting um, this guy in ease or this brother in a position to be the first modern-day um, pope because, you know, prior to, there was three popes, or uh, three so-called black popes, um, who was Coptic, actually, um, who came from either the Coptic or Ethiopic um, church. Exactly, yeah. So, I mean, this is nothing new. You can go and read that in Sex and Race by Jay Rogers, Volume 1. You can read that also in What They Never Told You in History Class by Endo Kim and Kush, as well as also The Missing Pages of History by Endo Kim and Kush. So there's several books in which that speaks about um, the first so so-called three, you know, black popes. So, they trying to get us to think that this is the first pope ever, just like they had us to think that Obama was the first black president ever. So, mm-hmm. um, even though well, President Obama didn't even agree with the word um, black itself, um, and matter of fact, he got really cute for saying so on the Tom Jordan morning show. Tom um, Chop Jordan um, and then was claiming, so what you want us to call you? You know, you're not black, you know, and so he told him that um, African Americans, you know, so they started joking. They was like, well, shoot, what, he want to be clear? <laughs> That's um. You know, so so these might be some things in which they we definitely need to check out. But anyway, um, Peter Turkson, um, is 64 years old, and um, you know, he was born October 11th, 1948. Um, so he is a Libra, and they're uh, trying to put a Libra in here in order to balance the scales of justice. You know, over the papal state, which is of course the Vatican, which means within Catholicism or the Catholic the word Catholic means universal. So he is um, being the head of the universal. Um, church, you know, with 1.2 billion followers, you know. So um, we know that this is getting ready to take place. Matter of fact, they even had him up for position before um, Ratson, um, you know, before this pope, you know, Rappazinger or whatever his name is, um, but the rat, you know what I'm saying. Um, but he actually, um, this brother here was actually, they actually had him on TV they was showing him to be the um, get ready to be the pope, you know, or speculating that he was going to be the pope prior to 
uh, rap singer or rap singer, whatever his name is, for this present um, Pope, you know, became president of Pope Benedict XVI or whatever you want to refer to him as. Um, so now that he's stepping, getting ready to step, now he's stepped down uh, right before this asteroid comes. And like we said, these solar flares are getting stronger this year. So they got to have melanated people in position over the major um, super world power. So the Vatican Church is the world power religiously, and the United States is the world power um, as far as nationally, or you know, based on nationhood. You know, you know right. at least even though it's not actually a nation in that you know in that regard, it's up with just um you know because the United States you know citizens themselves um, being that is up under the de facto government and the Fourteenth Amendment. Never was fully ratified, but yet it has appeared to have been ratified, um, have made turned everyone into a U.S. citizen in order to accept privileges. So they no longer are American citizens with a capital C as compared to a lowercase c, you mm-hmm. know, um, in which that um, when you do your research on the 14th Amendment, you will see how all of this correlates and actually turns you into property. Um, so right. um, we see here. That, you know, matter of fact, they said, um, um, matter of fact, this is what Turkin said. He said, I'm um, doing a um, press release um, that why not, Turkin said, arguing that um, when you agree to be a priest, you must be open to the idea of becoming a pope. All of this is part of the package. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, check this out. It says, Turkinson added that the time was especially ripe given the election of President Barack Obama. This is what he says. Wow. Okay, this is what he says. All right, so um, it said, now it is Obama of the United States, he said, and if by divine um, providence, because the church belongs to God, if God would wish to see a black man also as Pope, thanks be to God. Wow. All right. Mm. And the fact, um, the rapper, um, Common, you know, um, who I just finished playing, um, expressed, you know, well, you know, in the beginning of the show, expressed his support of Turkson on Monday, telling um, TMS, um, TMZ, excuse me, dot com, that it would be a beautiful thing if a black pope was elected. All right. So. <laughs> is. So. Um, we understand the reason why is because there's a lot of shit that's getting ready to come down the pike, and um, the Pope couldn't too much last after the um, December the uh, 21st, 2012 thing. All right, we already knew he was going to last too much longer after that. That's right. Time All right, up. we knew that for a fact. Mm-hmm. All right, so we wonder when actually he was going to step down. I thought he was going to step down right before, um, um personally. You know, yeah, it was a Python aid, so he had to step down. Exactly. So I see that he did survive um, a month, you know, and um, a few days afterwards. So, you know, uh, you know, but <laughs> we, we see that's what happened. He, he did last about a month or so afterwards. All right. So um, we see all of this taking place at the same time. Um, we see a lot of things in which that is taking place. We know that um, we're going to get into Chris Dorner. And how the public did not fall for the Sandy Hook. Uh, Facebook was too powerful, you know, for um, anyone to fall for the Sandy Hook. They had so many videos about the Sandy Hook and the inconsistencies, um, the examiner, um, the actors, you know, um, how one of the ladies who was actually, um, I think her last name was Phillips, you know, or trying to or playing Phillips and. This is the same lady who played not just the actress in which that supposedly her child was killed in the Sandy Hook massacre, but she was the same lady who posed as the lawyer for the Holmes case <laughs> out of Aurora, um, Colorado, during the so-called Batman um, shooting. You know, um, during the, um, during the Batman shooting. Now, she posed as the lawyer for his trial. <laughs> now, I mean, I mean, yo, this, this, is, this shit is getting ridiculous. Yes, sir. So, so we know that it's all about the gun grabs, but why grab the guns? What's going on? Well, number one, um, civil war possibly is about to take place. 
And so being that Obama is coming in the image of Lincoln, the reason why so many Lincoln movies came out over the last um, eight, well, what, what, five, yeah, over the last, going on five years now, you know, so many Lincoln movies have come out. You had Lincoln that just came out. You had Lincoln, the vampire hunter. Right. Um, another Lincoln, um, you know, movie. I mean, it, I mean, it's just ridiculous. So many Lincolns. And all of this is now being done as Obama is in the, is, um, is in the um, White House because they want to assassinate him. So um, we know that civil war is definitely or possibly coming based on these particular fake, I guess you can say, episodes taking place, such as the um, Batman and the Sandy Hook and so forth and so on, in which that was definitely just put together by stage actors now, of course, these are the same actors that's in the um it is is playing within each one, you know. And we got pictures in order to prove in this show. As a matter of fact, you can go to www. Bay d r a l i m um b e y um or once again d r a l i m e l b e y dot com. So Bay dot com, and you can go to the blog of enlightenment. And we have um, a lot of the information there concerning um, what's taking place. So y'all can actually read um, the information. Now, here it is, you know, right after the Sandy Hook thing and being that that fell apart, they needed something else. And so here you come with um, um, Christopher um, Jordan Gardner, all right? So here he comes and he shoots two um, cops in which that, weren't even part of his department unless they got transferred based on reports. Um, he shoot um, one of the witnesses, you know, in which that supposedly, I guess, got him fired or whatever, dismissed from the department, um, LAPD um, department, and her boyfriend, and she was the daughter of the captain, if I'm not mistaken, um, and he shot them. So he shot four people. You know, um, right. matter of fact, there was two maids supposedly that was held captive and they escaped. Um, you know, I mean, just a lot of stuff. Yes, it was, yeah. They said that um, Dorna's mother drunk wine and ate chips and salsa while watching the siege. <laughs> this one, I mean, yo, yo, this shit is crazy. Man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, Dorna um, got, you know, supposedly um, got caught um, yesterday. The same day in which that President Obama does his um his um his speech. The same day now, you know, he does the speech. Um it just happens to end on, on the day that Obama does his speech. <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna keep saying that over and over again. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Hopefully y'all caught what I'm saying. Everybody everybody gotta know this not by coincidence. It, thank you. So um, some of the key events in which that expenses, um, this ongoing manhunt for um, Christopher Dorn, the matter of fact, they even made um, statements of the fact that he would be the first, all right, the first person to ever um, have um, in the United States, oh, domestic, you know, and they label him as a terrorist in which to have drones actually define him. You know what I'm saying? That's the first time in history that you had drones on the American soil, allegedly, you know, in which that did the spying um, on the individual in order to find them. All right, now, this is what it was talked about, but we won't get into that in a second. And the reason why they had to bring that out, because they have drones in which they get ready to release on the public, um, supposedly for um, the public's protection. <laughs> but um, we won't get into that in a second. But anyway... Um, so I'm going to go back to Sunday, February the 3rd, um, how um, an assistant women's coach, basketball coach, and her fiancé was found shot um, dead in their car in um, Irvine, um, California. The police learned that the woman was the daughter of a retired Los Angeles police captain who represented Dorner in domestic hearings that resulted in the dismissal from the force. So that's what we just finished talking about. Mm-hmm. Then right. um, Monday, February the 4th, um, the same day in which that the Pope, um, you know, um, announced um, his resignation. Um, or was it this past Monday? But anyway, um, Monday, 
February the 4th, excuse me, some of Dorna's belongings, including police equipment, are found in the trash um, bin in suburban San Diego, linking them to the um, Irving killings. This is what it said now. Um, then, of course, Wednesday, February the 6th, police um, announced finding Dorna's manifesto online. Huh. All right, so, and of course, that went, you know, viral. That was all over the place. All right, and we know, um, but if you read it, the manifesto, um, he has se- um, severe allegations um, um, hidden the LAPD and how they was racist and so forth and so on, and how they dismissed him for no reason, and the corruption in which that was going on in the department, and he was naming names. Okay, mm-hmm. I think it was something like that. Right now, based on what they said, they say that this, you know. Some brothers, you know, um, supposedly from um, words out there in um, Cali, they were saying that, you know, this dude was real. I can't say how real this is, you know what I'm saying? But me personally, I just think the fact that it came on the heels of um, these particular events and the fact that they're trying to pull back the guns and all of these particular shootings. But then again, we had to ask the question, why um, indict the LAPD. Well, the LAPD is known for being able to handle, um, you know, scandals. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. We can go back and look at the most popular scandal of the 1990s, and that was the beating of Rodney King. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Um, and shit, and even the most, and even the um, the trial of the century, but um, O.J. Simpson and how they framed his ass. No doubt. You know, so... Um, you know, I'm still one of the ones that don't believe that OJ did this shit. Because if the glove don't fit, then you must quit. All that's right, right brother. You no, know, that's a little wrong for your niggas out there. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, 10:30 p.m. Wednesday, February the 6th, a man matching during this description makes a feeble attempt to steal a boat from the San Diego Marina. An 81-year-old man on the vessel is tied up, but otherwise unharmed. On one thirty a.m. Thursday, Friday, um, excuse me, February the seventh, LAPD officers protecting a person named in the manifesto um, chased a vehicle that that they believe is Dorna, and one officer is grazed in the forehead by a bullet during the shootout, and the gunman flees. A short time later, a, gu- um, a shooter believed to be um, Dorna ambushes two Riverdale on um, Riverside excuse me, police officers during a routine. Patrol and one officer is killed and the other is critical, um, critically injured. But I think he ends up dying. So now, this is amazing because number one, the Riverside Police, unless like I said, they was um, formerly part of the LAPD, um, didn't have anything to do with, you know, him and his um, this revenge in which that was supposedly um, within the letter. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know. Um, is a known fact, though, is that police in that area, you know, in California, I mean, they were shooting innocent, by, you know, they were shooting innocent people. There was, um, there was a, um, there's women in which that was shot. Now, you know, the women don't look nothing like no damn, um, um, right. you know, brown skin, um, right. Dartner, Dartner, but here they go, but here women getting, um, um, shot, you know, and killed. That's Two right. of them. Mm-hmm. Um, based on reports, you know what I'm saying. So I mean, and they riddling the car up because it's too, supposedly it was um, cars in which that they seen um, Chris Dartner in. So here they are shooting, even though Chris Dartner is nowhere in sight. These are women in the car, and they shooting up um, the cars, riddling the cars with bullets. That's masculine, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so you know, you you definitely got to say, and and that proves the corruption. In which that um, Chris, you know, is um, was talking about within the letter. If that actually, if he actually wrote it, you know, I'm still weary about it based on the fact of we know that that um, Sandy Hook shit failed. Mm-hmm. I mean that that was. I mean, I mean if that was ever a conspiracy theory um, in which that was able to bust through some shit. That was the worst shit I ever seen as far as conspiracy theory. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean that that was the worst shit I ever seen. The little girl Emily is supposed to have been dead. Here she is in the picture two days later uh, with President Obama um, and President Obama holding her and shit. I mean, this this is some of the worst shit I've ever seen. 
stage stage shit ever seen. Crazy. And maybe so that President Obama did it like that. In order for us to see through the elite's bullshit. Who knows? You know what I'm I can't tell you which is which. I'm just saying that the shit was apparent. <laughs> but anyway, um two twenty AM um Thursday, February the seventh, uh um shuttle driver of a bus turns in a wallet with a LAPD badge and a picture of um ID of Dorner to the San Diego um police. And it says fortunate. Right, it says the wallet was found fewer than five miles from the boats near San Diego International Airport. Now now that's that's amazing. So the LAPD badge and a picture ID of Dorner in a wallet shows up now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's to the San Diego police. But yet they say that they knew that the charged body of the individual in the cabin was Dorner because of a of a um driver's license. Now normally driver's license are in the wallet. Right. So that would have been found last week, actually six days ago, Thursday, February the seventh. But we'll get to that in a second. So five AM Thursday, February the seventh, it says, um, Los Angeles police guarding a manifesto, um, targets in a LA suburban of Torrance open fire on a truck that mistakenly believed to be Darner. A mother and daughter developing the um newspapers are injured. All right. So that's what we just finished talking about. So they wasn't killed but they was injured. But they riddled up the whole damn car. A short time later the Torrance police was involved in a second shooting involving a um a different truck they also mistake um mistake um mistook for um mistake for um Darners. But luckily in this case nobody was hurt. Wow. So this is two different incidences from Torrance on police. Now that's not even um that's not even LAPD. That's a suburb. All right? But they going crazy. Trying to set that brother up. Right, shooting up every damn thing. So eight thirty um five AM um that Thursday, February seventh again, police finds a burnt out pickup truck near the Big Bear ski area in the um, San Bernardino um, mountains. And six hours later, they it as Dortners. Now, how do they identify this truck is his when they just finished mistakenly shooting up cars and trucks? <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? They just, I mean, um, Torrance Police just finished shooting up two trucks. They didn't know what truck that brother had. Right. So here it is, three hours later, three and a half hours later, they find out that it was um, his truck when the Torrance police just finished shooting up two damn trucks. All that set up. Right. And then by 9.40 a.m. Thursday, February the 7th, Naval um, Base on Point Loma in um, San Diego is locked down after a Naval worker reports seeing someone who resembles Dorner. The military um, official later said Darna had indeed checked in a hotel on the base earlier um, in the week on Tuesday, but had left on Wednesday. <laughs> now, Darna stayed there for 24 hours during his rampage. The military thought he didn't know who he was, huh? Go. He just, just went on in there and uh, uh, spent the night in exactly. a hotel, huh? Two flowers, or, you know, or whatever the case is. The whole damn night. And they sold his BS to the public, huh? Oh, yeah, well, they they sold it to us, bro. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, let's, let's get back to it. Okay. 4 p.m. Thursday, February the 7th, authorities search a Las Vegas area home belonging to Dortner and leaves with several boxes of items. They say no weapons were found, but declined to disclose what was discovered. So this dude got homes everywhere. <laughs> no, but all this is in Las Vegas now. On Friday, February the 8th, dozens of searches hunt for Dorner in the freezing snow in San, Bider- um, San um, Ber- um, Berdino Mountains after losing his footprints near the site where the truck was found. 
All right. Authorities searched Dorton's mother's home or house in La Palma and collected 10 bags of evidence and also took five electronic items for examination. And then police also searched a storage locker in um, Bruna Park, Saturday, February the 9th. Um, helicopters equipped with um, heat-seeking technology resumed search for Dartner in the mountains near Big Bear. Right now, this actually cannot actually might not actually been helicopters. It actually could have been the um, drones, in which they said that they was going to release on the negative. But, but anyway, um, one man. Authorities revealed the weapons and camping gear was found in Dartner's burnt truck. All right. Um. So now the damn truck is burnt. But anyway, um, Sunday, February the 10th, authorities announced a $1 million reward for information leading to Dartner's arrest. All right, Monday, February the 11th, Riverside County prosecutors charged Dartner with murder, uh, murdering a police officer and the attempted murder of three other officers in a potential um, death um, penalty case. Authorities received more than 700 tips since the re- um, reward was announced. Twelve two. Now you know everybody was looking like him. Hell, they even had pictures of um LL Cool J looking like Dorner on, on the internet, and um there was people right um um in L A. were shoot on, you know, um, by this time saying that um don't shoot me, I'm not Chris Dorner, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Please don't shoot me. I'm I, you know. Wow. I'm not. But yeah, they had shirts. Matter of fact, they on eBay. You can um buy one on eBay. All right, um, 12.20 p.m., um, Tuesday, February the 12th, police are summoned after a man resembling Dorna steals a vehicle in the San um, um, Bernardino Mountains. The vehicle is quickly um, located on um, Highway 38, and the suspect abandons the vehicle, runs into the um, forest, and barricades himself inside a cabin. All right, 12.40 um, p.m., Tuesday, February the 12th, it says state fish and wildlife warrants um, wardens are involved in a sh- in a shootout with the suspect. All right, two San Bernardino um, County Sheriff deputies are wounded in a second exchange of fire, gunfire. All right, so 4:30 p.m. Tuesday, February the 12th, um, police surrounded the cabin where the suspect is held up, and gunfire erupts before a blaze engulfs the structure, and law enforcement. Officers wait for the fire to burn out. 4.50, Tuesday, February 12th, um, a San Bernardino um, County Sheriff spokesman confirmed one of the two wounded officers had died and the other one is in surgery and expected to survive. Um, so he ended up, so I guess he ended up killing three then. Um, 6.30 p.m., Tuesday, February 12th, um, police finds a charred, body in the rubble of the burning cabin of the burnt cabin. They did not confirm the identity, although authorities earlier said they believed the man in the cabin was Dorner. Now they saying that they have not identified him, but earlier they said they did because his um license was there. Now it's amazing how they always even in the nine one one um killing, you know, um Planes hit the damn buildings, but a damn license they found on the ground. <laughs> they always find some goddamn license now. In the middle of all that fire. In the middle of all the fire. But damn body burnt the hell up, but the goddamn ID still remains. <laughs> that got to be some motherfucking tough-ass plastic, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Plastic that it's don't... Uh... Uh, uh, uh. I said that don't burn, brother. But the whole, but the the goddamn whole body burns though. It's charred. You know what I'm saying? That's that's beyond thirty. Survive. That's beyond third degree burnt, brother. Charred is beyond third degree burnt, but yet the goddamn ID survived. Mm. <laughs> 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 Woo! <laughs> Yo, yo, this shit is a, this shit here, man. <laughs> this here, exactly, sloppy, sloppy. Yes, sir, indeed, first class. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> man, 
I don't see how people believe it. Exactly. I don't see either. You know, but, I mean, they had to make him, like, into a hero because they just, we just finished seeing Django. Right. You know, and Django, you know, he killed all the white folks. Yes, he did. You know what I'm saying? And so, of course, he called Chris Dartner a couple of weeks after everybody done, you know, a few weeks after everybody done seen Django, you know, not even a whole, shit, just a month. You know, Django came out, what, December the 25th? Right. You know, here it is by February, you know, the, um, by the first week of February, nigga going off on, on the killing spree. Killing all the white <laughs> That 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 you know it was the revenge of Django in his ass, <laughs> and so and so he wouldn't go killing you know getting all you know men women and you know men and women. Hey, he didn't care. You know he he was getting them all. That's right. You know so you know this this was the same. Once again, if the shit, if, you know, if we wasn't being inundated with in the beginning of December with the Sandy Hook. Um, bullshit, and then Django by December the 25th, and then here it is a month and a few days later um, with a imitator of Django, you know, who speaks of racism and speaks of the police department of LAPD knowing how racist they are. And right. so, of course, that's believable for us, right. you know, because we've seen the Rodney King beating. So, of course, we would want revenge for that, you right. know. All of this shit was staged. As usual, because now they say they can't identify if it was him, but yet the damn ID was there, in which the early reports claimed that it was. <laughs> but yet his goddamn wallet was found days earlier, a whole damn near a week earlier. By a bus driver, right? Damn bus driver. So what's up with that? <laughs> exactly. Sloppy, once again. Real sloppy work. They got better, though. Goddamn, they got better. They put out the little nice... <laughs> And everything in the newspapers and on Facebook and shit made niggas feel real, real, you know, real like, God damn, boy, them damn racist ass cops. <laughs> the goddamn white man is the devil. <laughs> it, it made everybody feel like that once again. Psychological control. Psychological uh, 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 um, damage. Post-traumatic syndrome. Menticide. You know what I'm saying? Everything we can think of is what they used against us for those who fell for it. For those who were able to see the loopholes and see how all of this was taking place simultaneously, you didn't fall for the bait. You know, and so this is the thing in which that is going on. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to go to the phone lines right quick. We got area code 404. Area code 404, you're on the line. Greetings, bro. Peace. Peace. <clears throat> Eileen, this is uh, <clears throat> Brother Dwayne in Jacksonville, Florida. Hey, Brother uh, Dwayne, how you doing? I'm all right, brother. Um, it seems to me um, I got information about two or three years ago. <clears throat> I'm not going to identify who it was, but it was a retired colonel in Tennessee that owns a federal license. He told me three years ago uh, that by 2012, the issue of the guns were going to come up. And it's funny how they waited to the end of December to uh, <clears throat> throw up the Sandy Hook situation and uh, these gun buybacks. I just believe all of it is a hoax. Uh, and it's just my opinion. I it believe is. this cop killer brother right after John Go, like you say, him brother, right. is a whole lot of propaganda. It uh, is. To, and then to they give him such, you know, credentials. The fact that he was, um, you know, a Marine and, you know, right. uh, you know, uh, you know, um, naval intelligence in a sense. You know, and he was trained, and you know, and you know, and one of the best marksmen to you know to ever you know shoot a weapon. I mean, hold on, that's what they said about the J um, Django in the damn movie that um, the world would be calling you the best shooter in the West. Well, you saw that. It also, it reminds me of the movie. Um, what was it that Will Smith uh, uh, did? No, not Will Smith, but uh, one of the Winding Brothers, where he was getting ready to assassinate. The, uh, the president or something, or the president's wife, and it ended up a shot came from somewhere else, and they right, prayed. Right, but right, right. That was the um, yeah, that was the oldest brother. Right, I remember yeah, that. Right, I remember that too. Exactly. I can't think of the name of that movie, but you brought <clears throat> those who have eyes to see 
can kind of see through the uh, the smoke screen. Uh, a lot of our people are so naive and couldn't possibly believe they're so ingrained in this country that they couldn't possibly believe that the government will, you know, kill children and or not kill children. And I'm just trying to. <clears throat> I've had some discussions with people who really believe that the incident happened. Oh, I but know. again. Again, uh, Aleem, I'm not going to hold you, but I would uh, ask this question. Who was the young lady that sung at the president's inauguration that was murdered? Oh, yeah, we forgot about that part in which that was added right into the scenario. Right. Exactly. Um, um, she was shot, you know, less than a few days later at the inaugur- after the inaugural celebration of President Obama. And, um, you know, that probably was why he was crying. You know, it's because um, of them tears in which that was get ready to, you know, having to cry for for the female. As a matter of fact, what they found out is that um, she lived right down the street from where he used to live at in Chicago. Yeah, I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard your queen yeah. say that <laughs> early today. Well, you know, um, the only other question that I have, uh, I will say, uh, I live in North Florida, which you know. Uh, I've been at the first of the year of last year, if I'm not mistaken. And, of course, that came through. Let me say this before we get going. Okay. Through also her getting shot by supposedly gang-related violence, and she getting wow. shot. So, once again, involving wow. um, guns. You know, everything is guns. You know, gun kills. You know, not the people, but the guns. <clears throat> well, I can I can honestly say that there are some people out there and these are Caucasian people, they say they're going to have to pry the guns from their dead cold hands because they're not giving up their gun rights. And I, I really think that uh, it's, caused, it's going to cause civil war in this country eventually. I exactly. I just think that um, that uh, the governments or the powers that be. I just wanted to make one more statement. Uh, we're talking about drone planes. <clears throat> right. Here in North Florida, uh, it was an article written here about six or seven months ago <clears throat> where – Two, uh, three drone planes were brought in this area, and it said they were to be used by federal, state, and local law officials. Um, I was out in Whole Foods uh, in a place called Mandarin, which is predominantly white, upscale community, and happened to be in there shopping, and it was this white couple, <clears throat> seemed to be elderly, maybe in their uh, late 60s, early 70s, they had uh, talked about, they live out in a place called Middleburg, but they had talked about the drone coming in their backyard and all of the, about four or five neighbors in their community saw it and it lit up the whole backyard and they were really frightened. They also talked about uh, a FEMA camp uh, here on the outskirts of Jacksonville where literally you can go by on certain afternoons and they have dummies lined up and they're just machine gunning these dummies down. So believe me, bro, it's happening. It's happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no Most doubt. Definitely. No doubt it is. And um, as a matter of fact, um, the fact that they even made mention of, you know, Christopher, you know, Jordan Dorner, you know, you know, the the assassinator always has three names, you know, um, Sirhan, yeah. Rashan Sirhan, um, James Earl Ray, uh, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, always got three names. You know, um, Steve Coakley used to talk about that all the time, you know. <laughs> but um, how they target, you know, to be the first terrorist or, you know, domestic terrorist for drone target. That's, that was one of the big things this past week, you know. And so the brother just confirmed that this is real, you know. And so I'm going to get into the drone thing in a second, but we're going to get back to the phone line. We got another caller here. We got area code six one four. Area code six one four. You on the line, Doctor Aline? This is your man, brother Insight. What's going on, family? Insight. Uh, peace, more. Peace, more. How you feeling? That's my man, the elder uh, uh, co-host. That's my man. You be going in, fam. I love your energy, elder. Oh, thank you, brother. Look, Doctor Aline. Let's brother. let's get into it, man. You know I'm from the shop, man. And that the young lady y'all talking about is Hydea Pendleton, man. Pendleton, um, come on, come with it, brother. Yeah, 15 years old, shot and killed on the 29th, a week after the president's inauguration. I find it, I find it real ironic how all of a sudden, I believe it was yesterday, they found the two guys that, that supposedly did it. I don't know if they did it or not. Yes, uh, sir. It's the, 18- the same day that they get Chris Dortner, right? Exactly, right. The same exactly, day that right. the president 
do, does his speech, right? Right, both figures. Okay. All this go down within hours of the, the, the State of the Union. A right. Eighteen-year-old kid named Michael Ward and twenty-year-old kid named Kenneth Williams, and they said that it was a case of mistaken identity. They thought she was another girl from a rival gang. Mm. It's, 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 this all has to do with guns. And just like the brother said, the brother that just called in, he is so right. And I tell my wife and my family, I said, when the Civil War jump off and these crackers start killing each other, I'm going to get out the way. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I got a couple sneak routes on how to get into Canada, man, because I'm in Ohio. It don't take me long to get to Canada. I'm going to get out their way and let them kill each other, man. These white boys here in Ohio, my wife's cousin is taking a class now where they teach you for three hundred dollars, you can go to a, a five week class, and they teach you how to make your own bullet. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like if we want to get on top of it, this is the type of stuff we need to start learning how to do. This is the type of investment you need to be putting your money in when you get your tax returns back for those for those of you that's getting them back. This right, is, all, all types of survival listening. methods, brother. Yeah, that means exactly. we need to know the science of herbology, how to um, identify herbs in nature. You know, um, fruits. Right. Um, the proper fruits, you know, and berries on which that we need to eat, you know what I'm saying, so we won't get sick and get poisoned, you know what I'm saying, the, um, the, um, we got to know the difference of um, poison ivy and poison oak so that we won't get, you know, messed up, you know, yeah. um, um, and, you know, and I mean, while trying to be, you know, trying to survive, you know what I'm saying, so yeah, I mean, right. we, there's so much stuff that we have to learn that we need to learn, you know, in which that, the shit in which there's, you know, a lot of, you know, brothers and sisters ain't never went to the um, Boys and Girl Scouts. Yep. Right. Yep. So they don't even know how to tie a knife <laughs> or tie right. the various different knives. Right. They don't That's know right. anything about su- signs of survival. That's right. That's you know right. what I'm saying? They don't know about archery and the reason why they need a damn bow and arrow. They don't know about the signs of sword play. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, so, I mean, these are things that we definitely need to know. You know, even yep. if you um, can't make your own bullets, <laughs> as we just finished talking about, or you have to go back to the old time of putting um, big pellets, you know what I'm saying, or BB guns or whatever, you know, you know we need to do. You know what I'm saying? We need to definitely um, come up um, with some damn strategy. Right now, we, we're not even thinking. We're just going along and being held along like sheeple, you know, just doing um, whatever the media says that we need to do, you know. Right. And it's no coincidence that Dortner, you know, um, if you're talking about coincidences, you know, and the age, you know, and but Dortner was 33. Mm, right. And, well, hold on, Doctor Ali. What they said now is they don't know. They they, they saying that that's not that they they're not they, the body they found was the body of a female. Right. Is that it? Wasn't his wow. body? And I said I said that shit last night when it went down. And it right. Was up, I, I told my wife. I said, man, you know what? I, what it made me think of? I thought about life when Eddie and Martin burnt the damn cabinet down and they switched the bodies out and put them dead bodies in and they asses in New York at the Yankees game eating popcorn. I said, man. That 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 whole type of situation really could be going down because if they they train this dude like they say they trained him and he was as cold as they the media was hyping him up to be, you know what I'm saying? Why would he put himself in that situation to go out like that? You know what I'm saying? So I think I'm at the point now where I ain't believing shit the media is telling me right now, fam. Hell exactly. no. Exactly. For, for real. For real. Oh. It's it, it's crazy, man. They said it was the body of a female. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. We dude could be in Cuba for all we know at this point. You know what I'm saying? Well, I know he was trying to get in Mexico hard as hell. At least that's what they right. kept saying in the media. Right. But like you right. said, he could be anywhere because that's yeah. why they had to come back later saying, "Look, we don't know the body in which that we have um, that is charred is actually um, Christopher Dortner. We don't know." Um, so now that's why they had to come back and say that because, like right. you said, okay, conveniently they have an ID there, so that means someone planted that shit. And right, if exactly. it is, the damn cabin burnt down, but yet his ID or the license or state ID didn't burn up with everything else. Man, get the fuck out of here. Man. Exactly. Like, they think people is really that stupid. And I did a little homework on the brother, man. The brother's actually from New York. He was born in New York. Right. And his family moved out to Cali, you know what I'm saying? Right. And he was saying all the way from kindergarten through seventh grade, he was the only black child in the class every year. He didn't have another black student in the class with him until he got to eighth grade in high school. You know what I'm saying? So they say he always been kind of thrown and had, a, had like an animosity, you know what I'm saying, towards white people because of the way he was treated all, all up through school. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I just thought that was very interesting about the brothers as well, man. Yeah, but then they come back with another story in which they say that they interviewed um, um, his ex-roommate in which that said that they um, he never seen any signs of Chris um, having problems with white people. 
See, yeah, that's that's crazy. That's wow. crazy. So, yep. so it's a that's lot crazy. of misinformation and disinformation exactly. purposely. And this is the reason why conspiracy theories, you know what I'm saying, exist. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's because it's they, yep. they got the goddamn story right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I got to get your opinion on this, fam, before I get off here. I know you probably got callers. I'm going to get out of the way. But man, is 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 uh, I'm 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 throwing my I'm throwing my ring in the hat, man. I th- I'm gonna make the prediction, man. Is is Peter Turkskin gonna be the next the next Pope, fam? Yes. That's what I said, man. I told him. That's what I as said too, boy. As soon as this dude made that that announcement, I said they're going with the brother from Ghana, man. Right. You know and saying? the reason why they have to is because once again is that, like I said, um, we didn't think that the um that this Pope was gonna survive past um December the twenty first, twenty twelve. Anyway, I didn't think he was gonna um go past that. You know, time because number one, to usher in um, this so-called one world government, this one world church that they want. You know, they got to have melanated people. Um, you know, based on the prophecies. That's right. You know, and even though he walked around with a Moore's head on his shawl, you know, on and the um, yeah. Moore's head crescent, you know, what I'm saying yeah. that still was not enough power in order to um, keep going. You know, so now he had to say, look, because of health issues, I got to get the hell out of Dodge. Well, no, right. like I made mention of, there's an asteroid in which that is coming to the Earth, in which that is only be 172,000 miles away. Mm-hmm. And did you see did you see lightning struck the Vatican the day he resigned? They That's struck, right. Right, it struck the day that he resigned. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Uh, exactly. it's, hey, family, we live, in, we live in a historical time right now, y'all. I'm telling oh, you, man, it's, yes, there's so much shit going on right now. We, we ain't even scratched the surface on what's going on on this planet, man. So, And you've seen, you seen the boat that went down and, and, and the carnival cruise. Like, man, it's so much shit going on right now, man. It's hard to keep up, man. Oh, you went down. It sure enough did. I, I mean, yep. this is all current events. That's what's going on. This, this is just what happened just from Sunday to Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's going down, man, back to back to back. But I'm going to get out the way, man. Dr. Ali, keep doing what you're doing. You know I love you and the queen, man. Keep doing the good work. Go. To nah, the F- nah, brother D. You got to break it down. Come on, tell them about your radio show and what you do, brother Insight. Okay. Come on, hit it up. Okay, fam, we on every Sunday night, you know what I'm saying, from 6 to 8, right here on Blog Talk, the Insightful Hour with Brother Insight, Brother Ed, and uh, Queen Rhythm. Uh, we get it in. We just had Dick Gregory on two weeks ago, so go check out that archive show. Baba Dick really went in and uh, and went hard body on that show, you know what I mean? Um, and we just try and do what Dr. Aleem and others do, man, bring this information to the community because we're bombarded with so much nonsense and foolishness when it comes to mainstream media. Right. You have to have outlets like what I do, like what Dr. Aleem do, yes, and others do to get this real information to our people so our people won't have any excuses to say that they didn't know. You know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. got me, you got Aleem, and you got so many other good brothers and sisters doing the work. So we have no more excuses, man. Yes, sir. You're right about that, I. Uh, peace yes, and love sir. and honor to you, brother. Peace and love, hey, 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 Peace and love and honor to you as well, brother. Y'all keep doing what y'all doing, man. I'm going to be supporting y'all, man. I might not catch the show every Wednesday, but Thursday morning I'm on the archive joint. I got yeah, you. Just, just, just <laughs> like I, I checked out that movie called Hell that your one boy put us on to. Right, that right, joint but that's the right. He put it on to the Hell the joint, right. exactly how they could yeah. take all the flag activity. Oh, my God. And that's oh what's going God. on, bro. That's why the Pope had to get the hell out of Dodge because it's getting ready to get hellish. Right. Hey, that movie is heavy, bro. As, as a ride, he gave y'all a gem. Go check out that movie, Hell. It's on Netflix. Me and my wife watched it that next night. But yeah, and the crazy shit is that me and my wife watched it weeks before and didn't even know the name of it. Wow. 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 We didn't wow. even know the name of it. We was watching it. It was like, yo, this is pretty deep. But I yeah, did not even know the name until Azariah said it. And we went back in order to click and see if we missed something. And now I said, nah, this is the same movie we've seen. It. Same movie. Yeah, yep. the solar flares were tearing them crackers' ass up. They started eating each other and everything, man. That shit was crazy, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, fam, I'm going to go back in the queue and just listen, man. Good show, man. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. And appreciate I uh, that. Tell, tell the queen we appreciate them. My, my wife loves them earrings, man. Appreciate all right, that, all right. Appreciate that, and I'll tell them. All right, peace and blessings. Peace right. and blessings. Peace and peace. peace. All right, we got area code 336. Area code 336, you on the line. Hey, what's going on, brother Ling? Right, peace, Doc. How you doing peace, tonight? Peace, Doc. Hey, uh, I just got a question too, man. I wanted to touch on uh, also with the uh, Pope resigning that they said that they was going to place the next Pope around Easter. Right. And I just want the people to know how they're so symbolic with right uh, Passover, Aries, right Aries, the beginning. So, yeah. New beginning, then it's Passover. 
you know, yeah. which that symbolizes the um the sun passing um the first three month tri um um on the first of the three month trimester of the um of the pregnancy. You yeah. know um in other words, life being formed within the womb. So um symbolic to um um Aries being the first son of the zodiac of Mother Zodiacus. And so of course, yeah, that is very um um pronounced and pronounced wow. as we would say. You know, um but the fact that they would say so you know, um, that this is when they plan on doing it. So they know that this is definitely a ritual. Yeah. You know, which that, yeah. you know, like even Common said, you know, he, he would be happy that there would be a so-called black pope in position, you know. Now, yeah, I would. now of course, we know they, you know, they ain't going to cut down on the child molestation. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, me, me, me and my queen, we were sitting right here on the couch, you know, we was watching how they were talking about the Pope retiring and all of that, and then they they jumped in and said that the, uh, you know they were talking about placing the Pope in around Easter. But I was explaining to her, I was like, yeah, that's a ritual right there. I said because they also go in correlation with the, basically the beginning of the year, right? According to the zodiac, right? Doing the vernal equinox, right? The vernal equinox, exactly. Yeah. And um, or the spring equinox as they refer yeah, to it as. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, they um. And um, also another reason um, um, they got here in the chat room, brother. Um, 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 speaking about yeah, the name of the movie was Hell. H E L L. Yes, Hell. Okay. Name of the movie, and also um, Oya states that the day that the Pope announced his resign, um, his resign um, resignation, Italy allowed credit cards to be used at the Vatican. <laughs> And the reason why it says that, um, oh, yeah, Italy stopped the Vatican from using credit cards because of money laundering allegations. So here it is with that money in the banking system that we just finished talking about. Yeah. And remember, the richest um, place on the planet is the Vatican. Yeah. Right. I know people want to say the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers because they made up of the 13 Illuminati families, but no, the Vatican had yeah. more money than all of the so-called 13 Illuminati families put together. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so it's the Vatican, because they've been doing this shit for over, you know, for nearly 2,000 years. Yeah, yeah, I had read about that when I first started getting curious mm -hmm. about, you know, being conscious. I started reading about the Pope, Rothschilds, and all of them, about how basically the Pope is the one that really controls right. a lot of stuff. Exactly, and is the the black pope, the one who's behind, who's the head of the Jesuits priesthood, is the one who really runs the shit, because the Jesuits are the assassins. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, um, you know they 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 are the Vatican's assassins, and uh, whenever a pope don't want to um listen, the black pope um does his duty with them Jesuits and um get the pope up out of it like they did the pope before John um Pope um the um. You know what I'm saying? John Pope before this um um Pope here, the one who died oh, yeah. right. um um a few years ago, the one before him, who was a John, died of of um poisoning. Right. Mm -hmm. Them damn Jesuit priests got his ass about it because he was getting ready to try to stop the connection between Masonry and the Vatican. Yeah, that was depicted in Godfather Three. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I mean all of this is real. You know, so thank you, brother, for adding oh, yeah, on. No problem. All right, and we got area code seven zero eight seven zero eight area code. You on the line? Peace. 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 How you peace. doing tonight? I'm good, man. It's so funny how we were y'all just talking about how uh, they gonna put the black pope. So I was on Facebook. Yeah. And I'm like, man, y'all tripping? Cause if y'all think. They hate Obama, wait till they put a black pope in there. <laughs> so one of the people jump on. She like, man, you know, they gonna accept the black pope. People accepting black people, blah blah. I was like, okay. As yeah. soon as she said that, white dude jump on there and was like, if you think that they gonna put a Negro in the Vatican, you crazy. And I was like, hmm. I was like, didn't y'all say the same thing about the White House? Exactly. So I said, wait, you know what I'm saying? Wait till this happens. I'm gonna I'm hit you up. Like, okay, the Negroes in the in the uh, in the Vatican now. What you gotta say? It, well, number one, uh, first thing is to say, 
I thought the nigga was African, but anyway. <laughs> 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 but, but anyway, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but but that would be the first thing I would say to the um to the white dude. Number one, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, but um, if they really think that they can handle these energies in which that is coming and bombarding the planet Earth, then I am amazed <laughs> because they know they can't. This is why this pope had to get out, and he said that he has health problems. And he's 85, and now you know all the popes serve till they die. Unless right. it's the ones in which that the Jesuits kill. Right. <laughs> okay? Like they did with the pope before um, this last pope, um, John um, John Paul the Sixth, whatever. Mm-hmm. I think he was the Sixth or something, wasn't he? I think he was. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. He could have been the first. Right, well, whichever so one he was. Okay. You know, so but, you're saying the reason why he retired is because he know is, is it a sense that he doesn't want to die? In well the position, right? Well, remember, there's a lot of things taking place. Number one, they know about the prophecies of the indigenous people coming back into control and um, control of this planet. And being that is the case, they know they don't have the power in order to handle. That's why he had to use the um, Moore's head on the crescent in order to show the real rulership of the Catholic Church, who actually came from the Coptics from out of Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. the Kushites. So he had to show you, you know, that now you can relate and say, okay, well, this Pope here walked around with a Moor's head on his crest and on his shore. You know, so now when they put a brother in position, now that would be enough for you to understand what he was doing. He has done his job, and he survived only a month and a few days after um, December the 21st, 2012, and now um, have to bring in you know, this new pope and which that is from Ghana. You know, a brother. So they have to um, bring them in because they can't handle these energies any longer. Um, these solar flares is getting too strong and too powerful, just like um, Brother um, D, um, um, Brother Insight said. Um, you go and watch the movie Hell, you will see how they have to put on all types of layers of clothes in order to keep from getting burnt up. You know, so I mean, it, it's just it's just that all of these things are happen simultaneously, and another thing too is that for the Moors to get back into position, you know, they they I I think Obama what he's trying to do is take the guns out of the European hands so that the Moors as they as they go and um and go forth and begin to start reclaiming the land because they already see that's mm-hmm. what we're doing because they right. know now that the United Nations have already told us that we are the indigenous people of this land here in North America, and that we just did not come from Africa 400 years ago. Mm-hmm. And so they now know that, you know, that we will begin to start pushing the issue of land rights. And as long as the Europeans have guns, that's not going to happen. So I think that's part of the um, process, too. You know what I'm saying? You, know, so, you made a good point, though, because did you watch the documentaries uh Obama 2016? No, no, what happened? I didn't get that. Now... It's so funny you just said that. I I watched it, and I told my homegirl, I said, man, you know what? I wouldn't be shocked if this dude got in the office and was playing the role like he really for Europeans, but he actually changing the tide because he know what's about to go down, so he in there making all the moves so he can even out the scale for the Moors to come back into power. Right, and now the reason why I um, I, 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 um, somewhat um, think this is because, number one, is that when Congress – signed a bill in which that allowed the Dakota, the Lakota Indians to have the whole lands of North Dakota. It only supposed to be 100 acres, but they ended up signing over the whole damn state to the Lakota Indians. Wow. They brought that before President Obama. President Obama said, I'm not going to sign anything in order to reverse what Congress did. Mm-hmm. So in other words, he turned the land back over to the Lakota Indians. Yeah. Wow. All right? So, that is one of the reasons why I say what I say. Another reason is that if you get on the Internet and you search how President Obama and Michelle, how they actually was reclamated as Washington in 1997 by the Empress. Oh, wow. All right? And for those who don't know who the Empress is, the Empress is where the see guests don't turn to L. Bay who's the head of the Empire Washington Deductimania. All 
all right? And what's that other um, mountain builders here? In other words, they are descendants of the Omex, all right? And this has been verified in history and that the, um, the portions known as Louisiana, the only thing in which that was actually purchased by Thomas Jefferson and transferred to Napoleon was nothing more than a few military barracks and two streets. One of the streets is Bourbon Street, where they just had the Mardi Gras, or still is having the Mardi Gras, um, this week along. All right? That was called Bourbon Street. That's it. Now, the rest of um, New Orleans, um, the rest of Louisiana, that was the that was the um, Washington, which is known as the Choctaw. And mm-hmm. actually, it stretched all the way up over 30 million acres of land from out of Louisiana along the 13 states, all of um, Alabama and Florida, all the way up to Montana on the other side of um, 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 Oregon, all the way up into almost the whole of Canada. All of that, over three-fourths of North America was owned and controlled by the Washington. And the Washington made up various tribes, known as the five civilized tribes, Mm -hmm. the Seminole, the Creek, which is the Muscogee, all right, the Chickasaw, and the Cherokee. Now, of course, these are names in which they have given us, but, you know, of course, they would call you, you know, would tell you that they're Tar Heels or Blackfoots. But these are all names in which that um, um, they have given in order to throw us off the track. But they was actually Washington. All right? So we know that as we continue to go for the land, you know what I'm saying, that one of the um, um, prerequisites will have to be the removal of those weapons. Okay? Because in the prophecy in which that is stated by Prophet Nobu Ali, the European will have to go back to Europe. That's right. Wow. And you can read that in the oral statements and prophecies of Prophet Nobu Ali. And he also prophesied that if the European is fair in what is going on, that they will have to put an Asiatic in position and the vice president will have to be a, um, a European. That is President Obama, who's the Asiatic, and Joe, right. Right. who's the damn European. That's crazy, man. He was in a prophecy going back to 1928. Synch- uh, what do you call it? Synchronicity of the mother, ain't it? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. So, so <laughs> um, that's why I have to add in that information also, you know, um, so people can go back and research. So that's the all. Um, statements or traditions and prophecies of Prophet Nobu Ali. Go back and read that information, and he tells you in there about how um, the European will have to go back to Europe. And then, you know, even we can take it back to like two weeks ago, and then, like you said, a month ago. It's so ironic how the Django movie came out, right. then the Super Bowl with, with the Baltimore's, mm-hmm. and, you know what I'm saying, the purple and black and white. And everybody rooting for San Francisco, but I'm like, dude, if you don't see this energy facing towards the Moor, which is Baltimore, which is a completely black team, right? Or the Raven, team, which is a crow, which is black. If you didn't see Beyonce's halftime show, which was black and black the show and purple was Madeline, colors, um, 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 Bridget, as well as you also, know what I'm saying, right? And also, I, I, um, um, my man, um, Panic breaks down the fact that we had. Um, Stevie Wonder and um, um, Sam um, Samadhi, you know what I'm saying, which is one of the um, ancient deities. Wow. Oh, yeah, the top hat, right, right, right. Top hat, you know what I'm saying? So, and then now you got your boy, uh, you got Dorna running around here like Django. Right, running around like left Django, right. exactly, exactly. So all of this happening, you know what I'm saying, within – Less than a week of each other, mm-hmm. you know. So I mean, these these are no coincidences. And then it tells There's you that, mm-hmm. right? So it, 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 I mean, and the whole thing in which that brother Pennant was breaking down is that um, um, Samadhi in which that was played by, um, you know, um, um, Stevie Wonder, and the fact that Madam Bridget was played by, um, in all black by Beyonce, and then of course right after she finished, the lights went out. For um, an hour, a blackout, all of that symbolized the switching ties of power from the European back to the Moors. Right. The same thing. I said that's like a salute Beautiful. to the Moor when them lights went out, man. Right. I that said they the salute the Moor. 
Right. Oh, that was, man. Uh, it's from the um, Europeans to the Moors. And they did it during that particular halftime in order to show you was was going to have to come. You know, so all of this is, is all of this is symbolic to what what is getting ready to take place and what is taking place. All right, and so we know that Uncle Sam prepares to unleash up to thirty thousand drones on America for public safety. At least this is what they've been talking about. And this article was released um back in October, the ninth, two thousand and twelve. You know what I'm saying? So almost um, three months, more than three months ago. You know? In which that spoke um, spoke specifically about how um, the Federal Age, um, um, Aviation Administration is working towards putting the finishing touches on the rules and regulations for widespread domestic drone use and expects as many as 30,000 UAVs will be in America's airspace by the decade's end. Okay? So, I mean, this, this, is, this is definitely part of that, and the fact that they said... Um, you know that that Dartner was going to be the first, you know, domestic terrorist in order to um, have drones, you know, aimed at him, basically, you know, what I'm saying or search for him, you know. But the question is, who is flying the drones over America or uh, over the United States? You know, what I'm saying. And then it says that basically at least 18 police departments, universities, and other government agencies have received clearance from the federal government to set up a range of unmanned. Um, aerial vehicles or drones, according to the documents unearthed by the Freedom of Information Act, requested filed by the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Right, it goes into the fact that the Mississippi Department of, of Marine Safety has a 35 ounce unmanned um, helicopter made of carbon uh, fiber hooked up with the steel and a camera, video, um, video camera. Now, this is the same thing in which that we was talking about, in which that they um, had watching the um, cabin, supposedly. You know, it was a helicopter, but that's what I was saying, that it was an unmanned, unmanned helicopter, and that that was probably was the drones, um, one of the drones in which that they was um, using. That's exactly what hmm. this article states here. And then we got the Texas Department of Public Safety um, based in Austin, Texas. Now, all this damn... Um, Conspiracy theories that, you know, that um, Al, you know, that Alex Jones be speaking of in Austin, Texas, and here it is, is that um, they own what is called WASP, W-A-S-P, you know, in which that um, deals with um, um, these particular drones. You know, new documents also come as a part of the drone census, consensus documented by the EFF, you know, in which that states... On where these um, actual um, drones are actually located at, you know. So I mean, there's a lot of information coming out on who has control over it. Like we said, 18 police departments right now, universities, and other government agencies have received clearance from the federal government to set up these unmanned um, vehicles known as these drones. So um, people need to um, definitely keep keep an eye on that, you know, um, especially as all of this information continue coming um, coming about. Yes, sir. I mean, check it. I even got you. Even got other melanated people on Facebook talking about there's no way in hell they gonna put a, a brother in the Vatican. I'm like, are you crazy? Why? Why they don't understand history. because they don't know history. The Vatican started out with three brothers running. Um, matter of fact, the first um, pope was black. Of course, but I'm saying yes, even indeed. even on a spiritual level, if you don't see the transition happening, it's all around us. And people still want to be blinded by the fact that melanin is what's, what's going on right now. Yep. They don't see it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I be talking to people all day. Brother, I picked, I picked San Francisco and Baltimore three weeks before it happened and told people how it was going to go down, even broke it down to a – Semi level of astrology, et cetera, was looking into it, did some numerology on it. I was like, man, everything is pointing for this dude to win this. I said, however you chop it up, dude, this is our time. I said, y'all need to wake up, man, and stop thinking the same way. There's no way that, uh, a black person is going to be in the White House. It happened. There's no way right. that, uh, a black person is going to be in the Vatican. It's about to happen. Well, see, the only yeah. reason why it's happening is because, like, what's been revealed to us by the Masonic Shriners, the white Masonic Shriners have. You know, have told us some of these secrets in so many words. Like, for example, when um, 
my wife and I went to um, London. We went to um, the United Grand Lodge of England, and the curator of the museum portion of the of the um, lodge came to us and said, "How you feel about the possibilities of your first black president?" And this was the day before Obama got picked or selected, and we knew that he was going to get selected or you know elected, if that's what they want to say. Right. Um, we was like, you know, yeah, we know he's getting ready to win. But my wife turned and said, well, there was at least nine of them before them, before him, wasn't it? He jumped back. Like somebody hit him and said, who told you that? You're not supposed to know that. <laughs> Did, wow. <laughs> All right, so he said, Did they tell you that? Who's the they? Well, they had to be his white Masonic brothers, you know, Shriners here in America. No doubt. Did they spill the beans? And yes, they did because they seen that we was Moors. And so, um, as we be, so as we begin to go more mainstream, you know, they have to tell more of the truth. And this is also one of the prophecies, um, in which that is told by Prophet Nubu Ali is that, um, is that um, they will have to tell the truth, you know, um, near the end. And the end is talking about the end of their rulership upon this planet. You know, so all these conspiracy theories. This is the reason why um, a lot of the conspiracy theories in which that we speak about always have to come back to us, you know what I'm saying, um, essentially. Because we know that it's about us because we are the original people on the planet. And they only had a time span of 6,000 years or so in order to do what they needed to do. And we know that the Moors told them certain keys or secrets in the first three degrees of a nine-degree system coming from out of ancient um, Kemet, known as the Ancient Mystery School, in which that they had to um, give certain keys in order to give them the ability in order to rule for a um, time period. You know what I'm saying? But that rulership is coming to an end now. And um, they have to, um, as Prophet Nobu Drelli said, um, he will um, leave the Europeans in long enough in order to teach us how to um, run government. That is what's exactly going on. You know, whether it's ecclesiastical government with the Vatican or whether it's constitutional or said constitutional law with the government here in America, or in the United States, as they refer to it as. Yes, sir. Uh, All right, brother, appreciate you. Um, we got more calls no, here? No doubt. All right. We got area code 914. Area code 914, you're on the line. Peace. Peace. Not in New York. Brother. Uh, he's God. Peace, peace, peace. Um, I wanted to ask you, I had read somewhere that after after um, the Roman Empire fell, right. that right after that they, they brought in a black pope. Um, is there any truth to that? Because if it yeah. is, it would be like a correlation with almost like America falling as we know it and then them bringing in a black president and a black pope. Exactly. Exactly. Because their fall means our rise. Mm. Okay. That's Absolutely. the reason why that happened. Therefore, okay, I mean, okay. I'll rise. So um, that's the whole key. And, of course, um, as we rise, um, we have to get um, things back on, I guess you can say, back on track. Right. So um, we got to pick up the pieces of the, of the failures and um, try to um, piece the puzzle, you know, together, piece these pieces together, I should say, and um, keep it moving. You know, and um, we have to give the appearance as if everything is still functioning properly. Right. So this is the reason why, too, for the media, um, um, blackout of these um, bank um, foreclosures and so forth and so on. Otherwise, like you said, it would be mass hysteria. It would be, yeah. You know, absolutely, absolutely. Everybody be wrong. Okay, so 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 you're verifying that that that, that there was a uh, truth to a, a pope coming in after the Roman Empire fell. Right. Okay. Okay. And that's the fact. Oh, wow. That yeah. This, this is amazing. This is so much going on, you know. And, um, I'm just observant. I was at one point. I was doing so much studying on different things, herbs, and and um, you know our history and everything. Then uh, you know a lot of frustration started to set in. But um, now I'm just at the point where I know that you know everything will be and turn out the way it's supposed to be. Because, exactly. you know, you just kill your, yourself, so to speak, when you start to get stressed out. And mm-hmm. it seems like everything is so overwhelming. You're trying to deal with our people and get information to them. They don't want to hear it, you know. And it's just 
just sad, man, but I know that everything will turn, you know, back to its original nature and everything will work out fine in the end. Right, it has to because um, we're the oldest people on the planet and we haven't been able to be destroyed off the planet and it's been nearly 4 billion years. And if you get the book by um, by Michael Cremor, um, he speaks about the fact of forbidden archaeology, the hidden history of the human race, in which that he dates back that we were smelting metals 2.8 billion years ago. So here we are. We've been on this planet over 3 billion years, possibly as long as the planet has been here, 4.5 billion years, you know, that we've been here. You know, so there's no doubt that being the oldest people on the planet, we have the genealogy and the answers to any and every problem on the planet. You know, so we just have to um, come to that understanding, overstanding, understanding. And if we ever want to unlock anything, which is known as the Akashi Records or what is known as the Universal Library, we go within. We tap into the Medulla Omnigata, which is the mouth of God, which is placed at the back of our heads which is the doorway into the Akashic Records. So if we want to channel information from the Akashic Records or from our own oversoul, which is the incarnations of our past lives, then that's all we have to do. We don't have to keep worrying about what's going to take place and the next conspiracy theory, but we do have to put these conspiracy theories in proper perspective so that people won't go out and um, just, you know, just run out on Alex Jones' information and go panicky. Right. You no. Know? So, um... Absolutely. You know, no doubt. But we appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you also. And um, sure. I, I, I just wanted to say I had a, I, I got your book. Um, uh, uh, in it, uh, what was it? In it, in the womb. Right out of the, right. Um, out of the, um, out of the womb, into the mind. Mm-hmm. Out of the womb, into the mind. Yeah, I had purchased it like two years ago, but at that time you didn't have it in um on the hard copy, so I right. got it. And uh, over the internet in the ebook form, so I finally found it, and I was so happy. And I printed out all the pages, so I'm gonna try to find a way to bind them so I can read it like that. So okay, I, well, I know that's packed with a lot of information. And actually, put it out in um, actual um, book form, bind it, and everything. So um, just keep abreast of that too, because we definitely going to um, put that information out. You can go to the new website, in which that breaks a lot of the information down too. That's in the book. Um, it condenses it and summarizes it. That's www.drdollymlbay.com. That's D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y, drdollymlbay.com. So check that out and go to Metaphysics, the Metaphysical End of Religious Confusion. Metaphysical End of Religious Okay. Got gotcha, you, brother. All right. um, listen, I'm going to let you go because I know we've touched with time. And uh appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, you get brother. area code 773, area code 773. Hello? Yeah, please. Area code 773. What's going on, Brother Alim? This is Brother Jay from Chicago. This is Brother Jay. How you, How you doing? doing? I'm all good, bro. I just wanted to go in on that, uh, that pole business. Right. About the, uh, like a little correlation with the, um, I talked to you before. Right. On, uh, we was talking about the, uh, the intelligence of the sun, and which was 111. I was going in on the pie with 3.14. Right. You remember that? Okay, but anyway, the Pope, this, uh, Pope Benedict is the 111th, uh, Pope right now. And the sun's intelligence is 111. Now, do you, is there some kind of correlation with that? Exactly, and the fact that he can't handle those energies. Okay, okay. I mean, that, that's what I was thinking. I mean, I know it wasn't a coincidence that he was the 111th Pope, and, uh, you know, the intelligence is the 111 for the sun. You know, the 3321 is for the moon. This this is in the Kabbalah, you know, so. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Okay, the, okay. But the fact that he got to get out of the seat as these solar flares are coming, which is based on the sun, and the corona mass ejections or solar flare activity proves that he can't handle the energies in which that is coming in, so they have to put someone in who is melanated to handle that. Okay, okay. Oh, you know, I was thinking about it like because the Pope, the, the really the Pope is for basically basically for like a, a media for between you know God supposed to be a media media between the God and you know for the people, right? 
the right well, people will be the bigger right. Christ, which is supposedly he is Christ here on planet Earth until Christ returns. Exactly, and I'm thinking like, you know, for the last couple of years in these movies, they've been showing us the dark rising, and, you know, like the dark rising, the transformers, the dark of the moon, and mm-hmm. planet apes rising, and you got the exactly. dark night rises, and, you know, all this all this rising. So I'm like, is it is it basically just telling us, like, we don't, there's no need for a pope, you know, we communicate in ourselves now, you know, the, the melanin is rising, in, you know, in us, you know what I mean? Exactly. We we can communicate on our own now. There's no need for a pope, you know. I mean, that's that's the way I'm thinking. Is that like, you know? Exactly. I can definitely see oh. that. Mm-hmm. Because the Christ right. has returned. Exactly. 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 Right. So there's no need for a medium. Right. There's no need for him to act as the medium for 1.2 or 1.5 million or so people. For the masses, you know, that was that. Right. Even the prime ministers and the presidents, when they go and see him, they have to kiss his pinky ring and bow down to him. Exactly. Showing right. that he has more authority over the planet than they do. Right, right. Okay. The Christ has returned, meaning the Christ has returned within all of us more. Exactly. 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 And that and that voice is getting getting stronger and stronger, so there's no need for no medium. Exactly. Yes, sir. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot, brother. All right, peace, brother. Peace. peace. All right. Let me see here if we got anything in the chat room. It says, sorry, it was the prophecy of Malachi. It says that, what do you think of the prophecy of, of uh, Melchizedek, the prophecy of the last pope, in which that um, is spoken of? If you go to www.catholicculture.org, right slash news, right slash headlines, right slash index dot CFM. All right. Okay. If you go there, um, you will see what um, Oya is speaking, um, speaking to. And it says that um, the Vatican cleared to resume credit card ATM transactions. Hmm. So, once again, it goes on. It says, the Vatican Museum has resumed accepting credit cards, transactions, and ATM machines in Vatican City are working again. After the Vatican reached an agreement with a Swiss firm to process the bank card transactions. Hmm. Wow. All right? So, this is this is um, the day. This was yesterday. All right, so this is the day after the Pope announces his retirement officially, or when he steps down officially, I should say. Mm-hmm. says that the um, Swiss Aduna Group agrees to process bank card transactions at the Vatican locations, breaking a stalemate that has occurred when Italian banking officials ref- refused to handle the transactions, claiming that the Vatican has failed to meet new European standards to prevent money um, laundering. The Vatican, um, which has worked for months to meet European banking standards, was caught off guard by a January 1st announcement that the um, Italy Central Bank would no longer process bank cards transactions for the Vatican. The Vatican has hoped to persuade Italian officials that new internal control has satisfied the immediate concerns of... um, Security officials and the um, Dutch Bank it, um, Italia, which has handled bank card transactions inside the Vatican, shall be allowed to resume processing those transactions. The agreement with Aduna um, apparently resolved the problem. However, the freeze on credit cards and ATM transactions have complicated life for tourists at the Vatican and cut into sales at the Vatican Museum. Post office and other shops to re, um, result to cash only business reportedly cost the Vatican roughly forty thousand dollars a day. Hmm. Only making forty thousand dollars a day, um, based on that, as compared to them probably making, you know, it says probably up to like four million. You know what I'm saying? Along with the credit card, you know, so. Um, that is what's going on. And um, thanks for the um, article, um, Oya, for we can definitely get that information in. 
And of course, we see that as a um, part of you know, what is going on here. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, oh, all right. The prophecy of uh, Malachi or Malachi, um, <coughs> Father Malachi, which that was often. Um, this is the question I'm asking in, um, in the chat room here um, to Oya. Is this um, Father Malachi in which that was often on Coast to Coast AM on the Art Bell show and Judge Norrie before he passed? In which that he was dealing with um, certain prophecies coming from the Vatican? Or is this the prophecy of um, um, Malachi from, 19, um, from the early 1900s? I don't know which I, one. I, I, I don't either. Right. So um, we're going to continue um, dealing with the information. So we're going to sum it all up. Basically, um, the Pope um, has announced his retirement. The new Pope is getting ready to get ushered in by the name of Peter um, Turkson, the son of a Turk, hence a more once again. Um, Peter symbolizes the phallic symbol in which that is the symbol in which that is the obelix, the Osarian um, penis or phallus, in which that sits mm-hmm. right there in the papal state in the center of the Vatican. Yes, it um, does. You know, um, so as he gets put into position, I don't know which pope he's going to be because, you know, they always take on a certain pope name. Is it Pope John? Pope, Pope Clement, Pope um, Benedict, or whatever the case may be, I don't know what his name may be. But right now, when you break down his name, is Turkson. He's the son of a Turk. And the word in Turks, the original Turks, is based on J. Rogers, Sex and Race, Volume 1 in particular, as well as also in what they never told you in history class by Indo Kemet Kush, states that the original Turks were Moors. So I don't see that as just a coincidence mm-hmm. either. You know, so he will be um, given a position as Pope, more than likely. Um, I don't see why not, because this is like the second time that they've actually um, put forth this energy. This last time, the Pope, um, like we said, Pope Benedict the 16th, he walked around with a shawl of a moor. You know, as well as also, if you see him sitting in the Vatican, you see the crescent of the Moor head over top of his um, seat, mm-hmm. over his throne, you know, his Vatican seat. So we know, um, you know, matter of fact, you can go to um, www.drlemailbay.com um, for those who want to see the picture, or either to www.rvbaypublications.com. In order to see the picture, um, it is then you will see the Pope sitting underneath a Moor's head as he sits on his throne. So that's no coincidence. That was ushering in um, the brother in which that is coming in um, from Ghana. I think that is all part of the same ushering in. And if people can't see it, then, like the brother said, he's been debating people back and forth about if this is going to happen or not. It is. Mm-hmm. It happened with Obama. It's getting ready to happen with the Vatican. Okay. Okay, so it's just that simple. So um, we're getting ready to get up off of here. Um, and um, basically, what I'm getting ready to play is um, called JJC, We Are Africans. And this is going out to the new black pope, uh, that's, uh, African pope that's getting ready to get up in there. <laughs> all right, all right. Right here, all right. Oh, might not get that. Um, you might not get that. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> <laughs> you might not get that um, 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 oh, inaugurational um, um, music played. <laughs> <laughs> now they don't give us that much. Uh, <laughs> now that, that uh, <laughs> exactly. they don't give us that much pleasure. No. <laughs> That um, there will be oh okay um Oya said in the chat room that there will be one last pope before the church will be destroyed. All right. Um. Well, is that one last pope being a white pope before 
um, it is destroyed or put back under the um, um, back up under the Coptic belief system. You know, saying in other words, white supremacy or the white dictatorship or pale dictatorship mm-hmm. supremacy of the world with the white images and so forth be destroyed. You know, what I'm saying I would take it more so as that because right. um, I'll be damned if I'm worshiping white Jesus. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, that ain't that ain't happening. It ain't mm-hmm. happening. So, uh, so, so, um, my brother, on um, being in there, and him being the vigor of Christ, the images would definitely have to change within the religious system. So, hence, it would be destroying um, the white supremacy and the white mind state of that everything is white. You know, not only in the United States with Obama being president, but also throughout the world, being that um, the Catholics or the Catholicism has spread throughout the world. You can see Catholics everywhere on the planet. Right? Exactly. They have their exactly. missionaries all over the planet. Exactly. So, you know, now they will see um, a more, you know, imposition. You know, a said right. black imposition. Right. And that's exactly what's taking place now. It's the coming of the Aquarian Age, and the Pisces Age is out. Right, right. So, no know, doubt the, about it. Same thing with the uh, the closure of the bank foreclosures we talked about earlier. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, we both know there hasn't been any money since 1933. That's right. Any money. So uh, they didn't want the people to know that these Federal Reserve notes they call money is not money. That's right. Uh, so they all knew that. You have a mass hysteria. Mm. You still have a mass hysteria. So now it got to the place where the, the, the debt can't go any more further. That's right. So now... That this, uh, there's going to be, be more hysteria if the people knew that. Right. So, yeah. That's just about what happened. That's how I, you know, how I see it and how I feel about it. And that's what's taking place. Well, I definitely agree with you. There's no doubt about it. Um, matter of fact, um, we got the article. Um, oh, yeah, has sent me the article in which that says, um, Malachi prophecy. Next pope will be last. Will be the la- will be last. It says right. ancient cop- um, ancient um, Catholic prophecies by a revered Irish pope ended with the chilling prophecy that the next pope to be selected by the, count- um, the College of Cardinals to fill Benedict XVI's place will be the last pope. Say well, Malachi. Have no need for another. Yeah, it says an archbishop of Armagh who died in 1148. Okay, so not even the ni- um, seven, um, 1900s. This is um, so yeah, this is um, back in 1448, um, 1148, leaving behind a list of 112 popes that has amazed some with these remarkable accuracies. So here it is. It says so now. Remember, the brother just said that the 11th, the 111 pope was pope. Benedict the 16th. So this one here would be the 112. It says Malachi um, used a short phrase in Latin to describe each pope, beginning with um, um, Celestine the second, and from the castle of Tibur, that pope's birth was um, Gideon D. Um, Castillo. More recently, he described Pope John the first with the phrase "from the midst of the moon." Mm-hmm. His reign would begin in 1978, beginning with the moon half full and last only one month or one moon. Now that was the one in which that was killed. Wow! All right, that's the um, John Paul, the, um, John, Paul, Paul, um, John Paul the first, who we was talking about, who was assassinated, and it says that his reign will only last one month, and that's exactly what happened when he was trying to um, end masonry uh, within his Jesuit priesthood, in which that the Black Pope um, ended up. I'm having them killed based on conspiracy theories. Now it was a, um, he also followed a pope by the name of John Paul II. Now this is the second one who um, passed, and it says um, by Latin "laboris sultis," or translated from the labor of the sun, an expression meaning a so- solar eclipse. As it turned out, John Paul II was the only pope to be born on the day of a solar eclipse, and he was buried on the day of a solar eclipse, and that is true. Oh, that is deep. Yeah, yeah. And um, it also says a near total eclipse were um, seen around Europe on March the 18th, 1920. 
the day he was born in Poland. All right, and it says on April the eighth, two thousand and five. Um, the day of the post funeral, a partial solar eclipse blotted out most of the sun, and that is, it is true. That is true, and darkened a um, a wide area of the world from the South Pacific to the Western Hemisphere. For the next Pope Benedict XVI, Saint Malachi um, wrote, "Glory of the Olive." Before the Pope was selected, some suggested that Benedict um, would be elected because the order is sometimes referred to as the Ovatine which name ultimately derives from the Mount of Olives in the New Testament. It says Abinity was not selected. However, upon his election, it says Cartnew Joseph Ratzinger, that's, that's the name, Ratzinger, uh, Ratzinger, um, chose the name Benedict after St. Benedict of Nursia, um, founder of the Benedict um, Benedictine um, order. So St. Malachi described only one more pope after Benedict is um, Peterus Roma um, Romarus or Peter the Roman. Now remember, the guy's name is Peter, and his last name is Turkson. All right. Hmm. It says the Irish um, prophet wrote, um, wrote in the final prosecution um, of the Holy Roman Church, there will be reign Peter the Roman who will free his flock amid many tribulations. Um, um, tribulations which the seven-hilled city Rome will be destroyed, and the dreadful judge will judge the people. Some believe the prophecy can foretell the destruction of the church or the world, and the play into Christian prophecy as revealed in the book of, Pro of um, Revelation, uh, which soon a final battle between good and evil. Hmm. It goes on to say that St. Um, Malachi, um, Malachi um, prophecies were first published in 1595 by a bulletin um, Benedictine, Benedictine um, historian. According to a traditional account, Malachi was summoned by Rome by Pope Innocent II in 1139, and while there, he reported experienced a vision of future popes, he recorded the visions in his cryptic um, um, phrases, and this um, manuscript was left in the archives and forgotten until its the rediscovery in 1590. A book published last year entitled um, Peterus Roman um, Romanus Romanus mm -hmm. um, The Final Pope is Here. Now, now this was just published last year now by authors Chris Putnam and Tom Horn detailed the um, Malachi prophecy and predicts that the current pope will um, advocate for health reasons, paving the way for the final pope. Now that's exactly what happened. Now this book was written last year. Wow. And here it is. Mm. Months later, he claimed health reasons in order to pave the way for the final pope, which is Peter. Okay. So now oh. this is coming from um, um, an article Tuesday, twelfth. Matter of fact, this is an article just written yesterday. Um, Tuesday, the 12th, February 2013, by Jim Myers, and it says, Malachi prophecies, the next pope will be the last. All right, so. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely here. This is this is here. Yes, sir. This is the time. Right, this is the time. So um, we're going to end with that. And um, like we said, we're getting ready to, um, let me see if I can find the joint again here. Now we want to play We Are Africans. Let me see if I can find it. And um, we're going to hit it up. You got any closing uh, remarks, brother? Yes, sir. Brother, tonight was very, very uh, uh, good lecture tonight you gave. Appreciate and that. Especially uh, uh, the information you gave about uh, the banks, foreclosure of the banks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just uh, was, was just elaborating on, on that, dealing with the, the Federal Reserve how it came into effect in 1913 and, and That's uh, right. 1933. Like, if they'd have known that, that uh, there's no money now, right. uh, it, it would create mass, like you said, mass hysteria. That's right. In this country, mass hysteria. Right. So I think uh, I'm quoting uh, what Henry Ford said, uh, it's best that the American people don't know, understand about the, uh, uh, the American economy in this country. Right. Because if they did, you will have a civil war before a nightfall. That's right. You know, so, and uh, that's that's about it. Looking no forward doubt. to the next blog talk show next Wednesday. 
All right, next Wednesday we're going to have, um, let me see, we're going to have Brother um, Big Man on, and then a week after that we're going to have, um, let me see, we're going to have, we have someone else on here. I can't remember who it is, but everybody just tune in. Yes, sir. But Brother Big Man is going to be here next Wednesday. Okay. Brother Big Man, for those who don't know, um, is a brother who was on 125th Street for years selling DVDs and, and um, tapes and CDs and um, cassette tapes and all types of things and, and um, actually filmed brothers such as um, Gil Noble and uh, who knew Gil Noble who um, actually filmed Steve Coakley and Dr. Khaled Muhammad and different other ones. And so we're going to be going back into um, the conspiracies of the assassinations and we're going to be dealing with Malcolm X um, next week and uh, next wow. week, excuse me, Wednesday. So that's what we're going to be dealing with. So everybody wow. tune in. Anyway, we out, y'all. Peace. First world order radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.